Welcome back to Broken and Spoken. Here it is, the end of the day, October 1st. I'm soaked, and it's still scalded hot in Tennessee. Man. And I really debated if I was going to record any this or not, because I've got a new critter over here, and I'll get to you in a little bit. But see this big block laying here in the floor? I pulled it back out of Lady Liberty and put the small block back in it. Figured it'd be more user friendly for the ex-wife, driver friendly, and for the Holly Sniper because it just didn't jihaw very good with this big block. Ever since I put that small block in it, I've adjusted the timing table a little bit and it seems to be happy with it. So I'm gonna put this big block back in its 68. Stay tuned. I'm glad y'all can join me. This Chevrolet here, 68 model. I really like the 69 through 72s, but this is what I found. Well, it's probably been 11, 12 years ago now. And I've really never been happy with everything that I've put in it. This thing's been from a fuel injected 5.3, a carbureted 5.3, big block, Everything but I think a Ford and a small block Chevy. Well, I'm over it now. I'm putting a big block in it. I'm getting ready. To, I'm ready to drive this thing. I've had it long enough. The issues that I have is the clutch pedal. We'll get to that later. But it, it it's two foot off the ground. I'm a Sasquatch. My knee gets hung up between the steering wheel and the clutch pedal every time I clutch it. So I'm going to have to address that somewhat somewhere down the line. Uh, this is a two-wheel drive truck originally. It's on a square body four-wheel drive frame. I didn't do it. It was like it before I got it and the guy did a pretty good job. It's all been coated and all that other stuff that they do, do back then, blah, 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 blah. What do they call that? P.O.R. or something? I don't know. But it almost has that powder, uh, powder coat look. So that's what I'm getting ready to do. And I've got all the parts to put to finish putting this together other than the front dry shaft. I got some front dry shafts laying around. I don't know. I might have to uh, call up somebody and have them build me one. But I'm hoping to do this cheaply as possible with crap I got laying around. And I know I'm going to have to uh, put an e-brake in it. So the other thing that really I didn't want to record this because this right here is where a lot of my time is going is I got me another German Shepherd and her name is Chevy 2 yep Chevy the second I've had a Chevy before great dog her stomach flipped on me years ago and I finally found me another one to replace her with really ain't the right time but it's like having kids, ain't never the right time. Just go ahead and do it. Had German Shepherds all my life, and I figured this one here, I'll just go ahead and name it Chevy too. She's napping. Hey Chevy, Chevy, say hi. Can you say hi to everybody? Chevy, you want to snap, ain't you? Yeah, so we'll get to watch her grow up in the past few weeks, months, years, whatever. That's going to be my little shot dog, ain't she? Yep. She's, got, she's packed, passed out. So here's my truck. Do a little walk around. It's got eight lug axles up under it. I put them under there. That's a 44 and a 14 bolt in the back. I would like to find some six lug adapters to put on it. That way I can have my six lug wheels. 
These are something I came across years ago, snagged them up, that way I could roll with it. And all this rust in this truck is 100%, I say 100, 95% rust free. I got some issues down here under the battery box, of course, under the fenders. Of course, I can trim all that out. Fender well. This has all been replaced. This is cab corners, rockers, all that stuff's been redone from the previous owner. This has all been done before I got it. Yeah, it's been, it's like a little collect all right now. But you know, no rust up here. The only rust that's left in it is the bed frame rail that runs back and forth right up in this area. And there's a spot right here that I need to go back and repair eventually. Uh, then I guess I'll learn how to do body work and paint because I definitely can't afford it. I found this square body uh, bumper at a pick and pull. I s picked it up, put on there. I already got the hidden gas cap in there. Same way with this side. Just needs to be finished body work. Gas hole up here has been deleted on. Probably need to take the bed off and see what's going on here. I don't know what all is underneath all that. Like I say, I didn't do it. I did put the glass and stuff in it. It didn't have no glass, as in windshield and back glass when I got it. It had doors, glass, and vent windows and stuff. But that's about it. Had a buddy of mine hydro dip these door panels for me, I mean years ago. Seat can use the reupholstered. And there's that mile high clutch pedal off the ground. I mean, it's probably literally eight inches from the floorboard. And you can see there ain't much room between the clutch pedal and the steering wheel. And my knee gets lodged in there pretty good. It's got the old four speed 465 has got the 205 transfer case all new door seals i mean it's sitting here and it's taking up room really and honestly i need to drive it so that's what i'm getting ready to do i already put the fuel tank back here it's got the blazer tank in between the frame rails so that's really what i'm planning on doing start driving it I ain't never drove it, but I would like to start. And it's a pretty good candidate to drive. It's not beat all up. It ain't rusted all out. Now I just hope I can find the parts that I took off of it from moving and this and that. Because when I had it at the other place where we lived, when we moved here, I didn't have a shop. The only shop I had was this white one back here. And all my tools... And this truck got crammed into that shop until I could afford to build this one. Needless to say, this truck sat over for, uh, I think, three years before I could even get to it to move it out. And what I mean by moving out, I mean I had to take the cores out of the stems on the tires to get that sucker in the building and that back out. So I know these tires ain't no good. They hold air, but I know they're dry rotted, especially where I had them flat for all these years. And I mean, I barely, I mean, barely had enough room to keep from dragging the, the opening in that shop over. My first order of business is my clutch linkage air. It's big block clearance issues. And it, Anybody got big block knows what I'm talking about, but I need to open that up and we'll come back later and build something to cover that from the inside. You know what I'm saying? Oh, and I've got a hydro boost unit on it, so we won't have booster issues. This is a hybrid from the pick and pull. Seems like that came off of a 2003 or 4 Yukon, Tahoe, I don't know. And I made it work with what I got. 
It works because I mean I've drove it around in the yard and it's got brakes. There's my transmission sitting there in la la land. It's been rebuilt. So is the transfer case. I've done it before I, I put this big block in it the first time. It's all good to go. Previous owner. <coughs> Excuse me. Boxed it in up here because you know they're bad about busting at the gearbox location. Now it's already pre-wired. So I mean I guess I ain't got nothing left to do but do it. So here comes some time lapse, I reckon. Whew. I went and scrubbed up with some lava soap. Now I'm missing a layer of skin, but it is what it is, because I can't stand and cut off disc dust all over my arms while I'm working. I guess it's about that fiberglass or something. But now you can see we got all kinds of room down there. And we'll come back and I'll make a plate, bend it up where it fits from the inside real nice, still use the boot, you know, later. There's always those later projects. Right now we just gotta get this engine dropped in here and fight lining them splines up. Man, this sucks. But I'm thinking positive. It's just gonna fall right in place. Right in place. I, I mean, it's gonna fall right into place. <laughs> Well, we got her in there. I'm all out. Good hard 20, 30 minutes probably. But it's all lined up. I just got to drop bolts in it now. Zing zang them in there. Now look, we got a plenty of room for the clutch linkage, I said. Oh, it's not hooked up. It's just flopping. There we go. And I still might have to do something for that. I don't know if you can tell, but it's that darn bar is close to that valve cover. I might need to weld something to this piece or bend it, get it further over. I don't know, we'll come up with something when we get there. But it's in there. Now, I gotta find the bolts. It came out of it whenever I took it out. But right now it's break time. Well, I had to go digging in my boat box over there because I couldn't find my fasteners. I knew I had motor mount boats somewhere. I ain't got no extra ones, but I know some came out of it. Somehow they managed their ways over there. So I finally found what I needed and got this thing all buttoned up underneath. Still like headers and all that good stuff, but no, it's late, and I gotta go get me some calories down me. I'm pooped. So I guess I'll be back here bright and early in the morning. Well, good morning to me, bright and early. I'm out here trying to decide what I wanna do first. And I'm gonna <sighs> procrastinate. Well, we're making some progress. Got the headers installed, radiator in here. There's some parts that I'm needing. Like right now, I'm running into, what happened to the oil pressure? Electronic Dewey that goes back there. It hooks my wire too. I don't know what happened to it. And that's what happens when you clean stuff up. You misplace things. So I guess I'm gonna have to go to the parts store and get something after all. I need to pick up some plugs while I'm at it. And some fuel lines. So let me make a list and run up there then 
We'll see about when I get back. Well, I'm back. I brought my parts. I installed plugs. I put the temp sending unit, oil sending unit. I almost ready to fire it up until I realized I robbed the uh, fuel pressure regulator off of it to put on the engine stand that time. I think it was in one of them back videos when we first had that big block on the engine stand testing it out before we put it in Lady Liberty. Well, I scrounged up three. And I'm hoping with these three, I can make a good one. The only downfall is the halfway decent one, which is this one, it's got a port for fuel pressure gauge, and the other two doesn't. Well, this one's cracked. I believe this is the one that came off the engine stand. Yeah, we could probably weld it up, get by, but I ain't doing that. So I'm hoping to take these three and make one good one. And I might have to put this back into the brawler carb because I'm running an Edelbrock. I bought an Edelbrock off eBay for 120 bucks for a core. Got it in, looked pretty decent. Slapped it on an engine. I ain't done nothing to it, but tinker with it. Runs fine, so I'm putting it on. I actually had it on this big block on a test stand trying to get some everything dialed in with it. So that's why I'm running, Edelbrock. But I'm wanting to set my fuel pressure about five and a half pounds and this 68 back here has a low pressure fuel pump in the tank low pressure as in like 13 psi one that's for tbi trucks not the high pressure low pressure but it's still too much for a carburetor so i'm gonna to have to regulate it through a regulator regardless of what i do so i'm gonna to have to get one and put on it before i even try to crank it wipe my sweat off and let's tear these bad boys apart see what we got this one here is a holly out out in I don't know why there's two outs on it don't remember much about that one. I know this one did work other than it was cracked. So let's bust it open. Well, that's got a port right here too. So maybe we can take that and put on one of these. That's got some sort of port on the side. This one don't. I don't know, we'll have to figure it out. Mm. Surely to goodness they'll interchange. Probably not, knowing my luck. You know, uh, the reason I'm doing this is because I didn't want to spend no money on putting this big block back in this truck because it was already in it before. And when I went to the parts store, I done spent $80. So I'm hoping to get away with fixing one of these. That actually looks good. No rips, tears, or nothing like that in the diaphragm that I can see. There's the ball seat. So what does this test? Pressure coming in, I guess. And this would be the pressure coming out after it's regulated. So we can't swap this out. What is this one? No name. Two outs, one in, just like this one. Out, out. This is a holly one too. Let's see about this. That has got a smaller or black diaphragm in it. Don't rip. It didn't. Oh, 
one. It's got a little, it's a totally different design. Sees how long it's been since I messed with one of these. I'm just a window licker. This one's labeled in and out on both of the sides and return at the bottom. Decisions, decisions. really don't see nothing wrong with this. Now this is kind of like the one that I just took apart. Don't see no rips or holes or tears or nothing like that in the diaphragm. I think I'm going to use this one. I think. Maybe I'm going to stick with the Holly one. Maybe this in here will work out. We're about to find out. Well, Houston, we have a problem. After I done a little bit of researching on the World Wide of Webs, 
these regulators, the one I looked at, is sitting over there, but uh, it's a returnless style, and I can't have more than nine, no, seven PSI internal pressure, which my in, uh, in-tank pump is like 13. So it looks like I'm fixing to have to drop that tank and remove that electric fuel pump. It's always something, but for now, I'm just gonna go ahead and we're gonna finish this up and try to see if it'll crank. But this, not gonna work like I was hoping. And I'm not gonna spend the 45 or 50 bucks, plus another 10 for shipping probably. When I'm just gonna use a mechanical fuel pump that's on the block and be done with it, really. I mean, it's there to use it. Just a little bit more work. So there's that. Well, I did the thing. It's wired up and it's ready to fire up. But the only point of firing up is, well, I gotta come up with me a bracket. So we have no throttle. And I got the fuel pump disconnected so we can at least try to get it, see if all the, the wiring is still good. Let's give her a go. Pour some of this down there. Need my stool. Even a Sasquatch still needs a stool sometimes. Hope it don't backfire, because if it does, it's going to be a fire. Guarantee it. What's going on? You loose. Should have some connection now. Sure. It sounds like it's out of time, but I ain't took that distributor out since I had it on the engine stand. So what is going on? What seems to be the malfunction? Hmm, let me dig into this. Well, I think it's because the choke, it's a number of things. Number one, I can't work the throttle and turn the key on in there. So uh, I got lazy, and since I know which wire that goes to the starter is there, I went ahead and hooked up this remote start button. The way we can do it out here, let me go turn the key on. Give her a shot of gasoline again. Oh, 
know I wish you'd pour all over the place so it'll burn the shop down. All right, here we go. Let's see if I can burn my eyebrows off. I got this nut driver under this linkage to hopefully hold that shut. shut very good did it but hey it runs it's probably out of fuel now but the goal's been completed right it's in, it's installed, it runs. There's just some things we gotta button up. I think this is gonna wrap it up for this one, honestly, because I still gotta edit stuff and I ain't posted no videos in a couple of weeks. We'll probably come back with a part two with buttoning this up and possibly the e-brake all on that one. I don't know, it depends how time works out. But if you ain't, go ahead and like, subscribe, share, do all that mumbo jumbo, leave a comment. I don't care. I'll try to comment, comment back if I can. And until then, see you on the next one.